Now, in this problem, similar to problem number 43, we have to rationalize the denominator, but if we just kind of apply blindly the same rule that we applied in the last problem, then we would just put a five down here. So we'd multiply top and bottom by the fourth root of five, but that's not understanding the concept. The concept is when you rationalize the denominator, you need to get rid of the root in the denominator. Well, if I were to multiply just by five, then if I need to, if I want to get rid of the radical symbol, I actually have to look at this four here. The root is four, meaning I need four of a kind under the radical. So I can't just multiply by the fourth root of five. I have to actually add two more fives to that. So uh, five, we have one five here. We need four fives. So I actually have to multiply top and bottom by the fourth root of five times five times five. So therefore, when I combine them, I'll get the fourth root of four fives in there, and then that's just five. So that whole thing, the fourth root of five to the fourth power is just five. Well, if I multiply the denominator by the fourth root of five times five times five, I have to multiply the numerator by that as well. And the numerator, this whole thing here is 125, and when I multiply 125 times two, I get the fourth root of 125 times two is 250, and then over five like we said. So that takes care of problem number 47, and now we have one more. And in problem number 51, we see we have the same root. So we, we, we notice here we have some things that we can cancel. So we're going to go ahead and rewrite everything underneath one big key root symbol. And then we're going to cancel. And when we cancel, we see, okay, 5 divides evenly into 10 two times, and 5 divides, sorry, <laughs> 2 divides evenly into 10 five times, and 2 divides evenly into 12 six times. And then if there's more a's on the bottom, then we cancel one a and we subtract one from that exponent. We have more b's on top, so we're going to take one b away from the denominator and one b away from the numerator. We're going to take one c away from the denominator and we're going to take one c away from the numerator. So when the dust settles, what we have here is we have six b squared c in the numerator and then we have five a squared. Now, if we, if we want to, we, can, we don't have to split up this, uh, this fraction again. What we could do is we could just rationalize the, the denominator inside um, by noticing that we need groups of three. So we have, to, we have to have a group of three of each of the factors downstairs. And so what we could do here is we can multiply top and bottom of this fraction all under the radical. Uh, by we need two more fives, so we have five times five, and we need one more a. So we're going to multiply top and bottom of this fraction underneath the cube root by 25a. And 25 times six is 150, so we have 150, and then we have an a in there, we have a b squared in there, and we have a c all over 125 uh, a cubed. Well, at this point, it's good to notice and understand that you can split it back up. You could have done this earlier. Cube root of 125a cubed. And by seeing that, again, that's the reason why we multiplied the both top and bottom by this cube root of 25a. So now we have a perfect cube root, the cube root of 125. Let's rewrite the numerator first, actually. The cube root of 125 is 5, and the cube root of a cubed is a. And so that is our simplified version of the original problem.